What is going on, Jet fans? Matt O'Leary back with another episode of Just Jets, episode number 238 of this podcast, coming to you after a disappointing week one loss. We will get into what happened and why it seems like the Jets coaching staff continues to make the same mistakes, why the Jets need to bounce back in week two, and we'll get into your voicemails, of course, usually at the beginning, at least for the last little bit. I've been plugging the New York Jets outing that we're doing in week four over with Talking Jets, myself, Ryan Greenbean. But good news, we sold out. So no more tickets remaining. We will have a large contingency of Jets fans all sitting up together. Pre-game with Tailgate Joe, really pumped up for that. And that'll be here before we know it, man. Just a couple weeks away from the week four outing against the Denver Broncos. But before we get to that game against the Denver Broncos, hopefully we see the Jets stack a couple wins because uh, last night or two nights ago, by the time you were listening to this, uh, the New York Jets coaching staff and the Jets just left a bad taste in your mouth. Now, there were some good things from this game. I personally was excited with what I saw out of Aaron Rodgers. I think he put some really good throws on tape. He had the throw on third down to Garrett Wilson on the like the little fade. Uh, he had the throw up the sideline to Alan Lazard and then the touchdown pass to Alan Lazard um, on the on the free play. That was exciting. But other than that, uh, there there's some things that I wanted to get into and kind of, again, starting with the uh, with the obvious and the coaching, because that's what spoiler a lot of these calls. And I'm so excited. We're back in the regular season. So many voicemails to get into uh, so many opinions. we got to we got to break down here. But. Robert Sala and this this Jets team didn't look ready. The team was not up for this game against the San Francisco 49ers. They were it was very obvious that they were not up and unprepared and they were outcoached in this game by Kyle Shanahan and Shanahan I think is one of the better coaches in the NFL so that's not crazy surprising but it's a little bit frustrating when you're going into a fourth season. This is a really tough opponent in the 49ers. We talked about it all week. And really since the schedule came out, I thought that the Jets got their toughest test in week one against San Fran. So them losing really isn't a big surprise. The surprise, I think, is the way that this unfolded. And it doesn't mean that we have to bail out on the season, but I do think it would not be... Do, doing you guys a service if we just ignore the you know the things that happened in this game that weren't good. The team not being up and prepared is something that has happened to Robert Sala in in years gone by. Uh, for instance, you had the the game up in Seattle when they were still technically alive. Last year down in Miami, they were still technically alive and they came out really flat in both those games. And in this one, uh, again, they looked. It looked like a team that didn't play in the, in the preseason. Now I I know they had, you know, much more practice reps. Those went up, and you know the joint practices they got a ton of run. But um, I don't know. Maybe the defense needed a little bit more work than anticipated. Robert Sala after the game uh, spoke about uh, him not being worried about the the defense. They're going to get that right, and I really hope so uh, because they they need that defense to be the calling card and. Uh, I'm a little bit concerned about that. The other area that I wanted to talk to uh, to you guys about with Robert Sala, in addition to the obvious getting out coached, unprepared, team not up for the game, there was a spot where it was a, sure it was a long shot to come back in the game, but there was no challenge when Brees Hall stepped out of bounds and was marked a yard short, setting up a third and uh, no, actually it was a first down run. Um, and then the Jets would not, they'd end up going for it on fourth down and not picking it up after all that. But they could have challenged the the spot and they elected they elected not to. Um, they elected not to. And it ended up coming back to bite them because I think they would have had it overturned. I think uh, there was a poor spot from the, the officials. Uh, I think Brees Hall did pick up a first down and Salah didn't challenge the play. He didn't challenge anything in the game. And sometimes, you know, how things play out, you don't need to use the challenge. But that was one where, hey, you're down in the game. Sure, maybe you'll you'll blow a timeout, I guess, technically, if you don't get the spot. But that one was one I thought he should have should have challenged and, and should have made the adjustment, which kind of leads me into the second thing that I wanted to get into at the start, which coaching. But Nathaniel Hackett falls into the coaching staff, right? And 
I, I thought it was very predictable. Again, uh, there were some plays that Aaron Rodgers, you know, checked out of, and they did have some some positives. And at the end of the day, the Jets scored three offensive touchdowns, which I don't know if they did that all last year. At least it didn't feel like they did. Uh, which is, I'll take that as a small moral victory, but the whole run, run pass is so, so predictable. There were times he went four wide with Garrett Wilson, Alan Lazard, Tyler Conklin, and Jeremy Ruckert. I like Jeremy Ruckert a lot. That's not his role. He's an inline tight end and someone who could, you know, be in the lineup in the backfield and block. Conklin, I thought looked pretty good as a blocker, wasn't really utilized a lot as a pass catcher. That was strange based off what we saw in training camp. Um, Lazard ended up having a good game after a, a drop early on. I had a couple of big catches, two touchdown <laughs> receptions, which is just hilarious. And I mentioned the huge play up the left sideline on a, on a beautiful ball uh, from Aaron Rodgers. But going back to that sequence I discussed earlier with Brees Hall when he steps out of bounds, the Jets line up on third and one. They have Alan Lazard in motion. And they have Tyler Conklin lined up in the backfield. Everyone in the world knew they were running the football. I, I turned to my fiance, who, you know, she she's a Jets fan and she's she's trying to learn a little bit more, but she asks a lot of questions during the games and and I spend a lot of the game while I'm taking notes to do things like this. Uh, also a- answering her questions or telling her things. And I said, uh, I saw the formation, I said they're going to run the football. And she said, how do you know? I said, well, it, it, they are telegraphing it. And the 49ers knew, too. They stopped them. And then on fourth and one, unable to to convert. And just like the personnel was a little bit strange, too. I didn't understand that. Um, like why Braylon Allen wasn't used until the game was already out of reach. And they pull Rodgers and have Tyrod in on the, uh, on the final drive of the game. That's the first time we saw someone else other than Brees Hall carry the football. I know that, uh, and I talk about it too, Robert Sala and this staff, this regime, really bring on their rookies pretty slowly. But if you were comfortable enough to have Braylon Allen listed as your RB2 and no other guy, no vet, nothing else on this roster, then you have to actually then use him. You can't just only exclusively use Brees Hall and not mix it up. And I would think that short yardage situations why do you dra- like why draft the 240 pound running back if you're not going to use him in those spots like weird if they ran that play that i just described with braylon allen it'd be like okay i get it they're trying to smash them in the mouth and it didn't work the jets got pushed around on honestly both both sides the the offensive line in the run game good news is that they i thought held up very well in pass protection didn't get much of a push in the run in the run game, which was frustrating. But the defensive line, they got they got pushed around. They had a horrible, horrible game. So did the secondary with, you know, m- missed tackles galore. Defensive line getting pushed around. Couldn't get any pressure. Just ugly, ugly, ugly opening game from the New York Jets. Again, see, I'm not saying the season is over, but it's still it was a frustrating loss in week one. Um, you know, there have been examples, with, whether it's Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay, where they start out horrible in week one and come out, rattle off a bunch of wins. Uh, the 2020 Buccaneers got their doors blown off in the first game with Tom Brady. They go on to win a Super Bowl. Uh, the Jets a couple years ago, uh, they got absolutely embarrassed with a worse roster uh, in 2022 by the Ravens. And then they end up getting hot. Um, and what? They were like seven and three, seven and four at the start of the year. So the Jets could absolutely turn it around, but they do have a lot to fix going forward. And I think that's a good transition. I want to talk a little bit about this week too. look ahead and uh, got a lot of reaction to the game, which we'll get to in, in voicemails. But just uh, the, the good news in all of this is that they have a very winnable game coming up against the Tennessee Titans. Now, Tennessee probably should have beat Chicago in week one, uh, but Will Levis was fairly bad. Uh, he had one of the worst interceptions I've seen Um, that was just incredibly, incredibly ugly. I know he's got like 10 starts under his belt, so maybe there's a world where he gets better. But he's someone that I think the Jets uh, and and could get to and and cause some some havoc with. They they have shown in years gone by to have uh, some some strong play and an advantage against some of these young quarterbacks. And that's the run that the Jets are going to have here a little bit. They're going to have Will Levis. 
then Jacoby Brissett slash Drake May in week three, and Sam Darnold after the, uh, or excuse me, um, Sam Darnold a couple weeks after that, the week four game, how can we not mention uh, Bo Nix, who did not look very good uh, in the game on the road in Seattle. So they have an opportunity to come back and get themselves back in the win column, but you can't, you can't overlook this team. Um, I, I think the Jets could, again, as I said, create some turnovers defensively in this one. Um, I think that's the, the key. But the bad news is Titans went for 140 on the ground against Chicago. Their, their ground game was working with uh, Tony Pollard had, had a long touchdown run. Uh, defense is solid. You know, Harold Landry and Justin Simmons are, are problems on the defensive line. Uh, but looking at their offensive line, um, I, I think the right guard and right tackle spots are a little bit weak. They uh, obviously have Peter Skaronsky, who you just drafted a couple of years ago, uh, who's a solid player in there. Uh, they're very excited about uh, their their first round draft pick on the on the offensive on the offensive line and JC Latham at left tackle. So they're they're a bit of a work in progress. But if you're a good football team, you have to figure out a way to to beat them on the road. Um, just there's there's no excuses. Have to bounce back in the week, the in the win column. Uh, Robert Sal is pretty confident that the defense is going to back you know get back to norm and be okay. Well, show show us in, in a few days here uh, on Sunday in week two. Let's get into your voicemails now. A lot of calls to get into today. That makes me happy. We start with Constantine, who called in during the game. He was upset. Hey, Maddie Constantine from PA. Listen, man, what in the hell are we doing? We got 653 left in the first half, and all I see is Garrett Wilson, Brees Hall, Lazard, Drops the ball, had a first down, dropped the ball, haven't seen Mike Williams, not using the tight ends. What the hell are we doing? Our defense can't stop a nosebleed right now. So please help me understand what's going on. The 49ers are running at will. They're committing penalties going backwards, and the Jets can't even stop them on a run. Now, I don't want to be a negative person, and I don't want to start the season off on the wrong foot. But you know what? They don't have Christian McCaffrey, bro. If they don't have Christian McCaffrey, we should be up 14 nothing in this game. And Rodgers, he's looking a little bit, I don't know, he's looking a little gun-shy. So I hope that I'm wrong. I hope the second half is going to be more promising for us. But I'm starting to notice things that are kind of irking me a little bit. So please, 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 try to understand where I'm coming from. I'm not trying to be negative, but... This is not feeling right. Hopefully we could get our you-know-what together and we could start involving some more people in the offense. I mean, we went to Garrett Wilson for three, three, I'm sorry, three straight passes, and, you know, great, they didn't help us get into that touchdown drive. But after that, we haven't done anything on offense. We look very lethargic. And I don't know what's going on with Salah. I don't know if you got to put a flame under his ass, but he's got to start showing some more emotion on that sideline. He's too stoic, and this is such a big game for us. I mean, we have a chance to beat the 49ers in San Francisco. Now, granted, everybody else in our division won. So do we really want to start the season off in last place? Please help me understand this, bro. I'm really trying not to be negative this year. I'm really not. But what's going on with these Jets? How come we can't tackle? They got guys pitching the ball 10 yards behind the quarterback, and he's running up and breaking five tackles. What are we doing? What are we doing? We need to put out a better effort, and we need to beat these guys. We have everything right now in our favor, and we're not taking advantage of it. And by the way, where's Mike Williams? Is he out? Because I didn't hear the scouting report saying he was out. So how come we're not mixing it up? We're going Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson. Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson. What is that? Anyway. I'm hoping for a better second half, and let's go, Jets. Thank you. Take for, care, buddy. Oh, we'll so, talk again soon. Sorry, Constantine. Didn't mean to cut you off there at the end. While you were talking, I wanted to pull up the snap counts because I was curious. Uh, Mike Williams played nine snaps, 18%. That's not really all that surprising. I was surprised that he wasn't targeted in the game. But I wasn't expecting to see him a lot. And I think this first month, we're not going to see him a lot. We got... Alan Lazard played 100% of offensive snaps in this one. Uh, then you had Garrett Wilson play 96. Xavier Gibson played 59. 
Corley got one snap. Irv Charles didn't get receive a snap. Conklin was on the field for 90%. Uh, Jeremy Ruckert, 33%. Uh, just wanted to look on the, the defensive side of things, too, because I know people are going to ask me about it. So I'll toss it out on the defensive line. We know they like to rotate, but... Uh, on the end, Jermaine Johnson, 69%. Will McDonald, 49 Very quiet. Michael Clements, 43 He didn't look good. Uh, Tack McKinley played 32 Brain McGregor, 11%. And on the interior, Quinn Williams was 67 Javon Kinlaw, 57 Solomon Thomas, 53 I didn't think Solomon Thomas looked good. And Jalen Holmes played 22 um, So that's that. That just giving you some, some more insight there. But... Uh, Constantine, you're, you have a right to feel upset after that game. Uh, I don't, I don't blame you. It was, uh, it was a poor showing, uh, in a lot of areas that, that you mentioned, this defense is better than what they played and they made some no name running back look like prime Marshawn Lynch. Like they just couldn't bring him down. And I get it. Like Shanahan, the, the, the father, the son, all of them, they are able to get a ton out of these running backs. That's their calling card, but. I was not expecting Jordan Mason to just go off in this game in the way that he did. That was it was a frustrating one, Constantine. So you're you're valid with that. Thank you for calling in and and your rant. It, what's if this trend continues and it's week four and the Jets are one and three and giving up a ton of points? Then yeah, we're we're gonna have some serious issues. But uh, let's see how they do coming up in week two. John from Tennessee is up next. Also frustrated with this defense. I don't blame him. Hey, Matt. John out of uh, Tennessee. Hope you're doing well. We're watching the game all together right now, I'm sure. Uh, not over yet. Fourth quarter just about to start. Uh, overall, you know, so far, obviously it's not over. Who knows what can happen to the remaining game of the remainder of the game. But uh, I'm not too upset about the offense. I think it's just, you know, a little bit of rust here, there, and, you know, some miscues that will get worked out by time season ends, those kind of things uh, that I'm seeing, you know, the drops, the, you know, miscues, certain little things that are happening that I think they can work out as time goes on. I'm a little bit worried about the play calling because it's kind of bland. Um, I feel like the best time that they're doing is whenever Rogers just kind of seems like he's changing the play at the line of scrimmage every single play. Um, love those two drives that we've seen so far. My biggest concern, though, is the defense right now. Now, I know we're playing a dynamic offense, and I know also sometimes when a dynamic player is all of a sudden called out last minute in a game, it can sometimes screw with teams to where they just don't expect a player coming in and doing what uh, they're doing with the new running back. But I'm real concerned about how this defense is being just kind of picked apart uh, everywhere right now. Um, I mean, they've been able to contain the wide receivers for the most part. Um, at least Brandon Ayuk can Debo a little bit. But, I mean, Juwan Jennings, the third guy, he's just killing us. George Kittle, I always knew was going to kind of kill us. But, you know, they're going to him in key time. Yep. And then most of all, just the fact that we can't stop the run to save our lives right now. They're averaging five yards a rush right now, and we just we can't have that continue late into the season. We need to make some major adjustments. Stop playing so much zone. I don't know why there's so much zone with these cornerbacks. We need to get a little bit more man to man in my mind. Not give them those huge openings I've seen in the passing game. But yeah, just uh, hope that we turn around the fourth quarter, get those two touchdowns, defense make some stops. But uh, go Jets and. Uh, Curious what you think of the game when it's all said and done. Thanks, yeah, Matt. No problem, man. It was uh look, I'm I'm not happy with how the, the end result came. I, I picked them to lose this game. I picked it twenty seventeen. I thought it'd be tight. It wasn't. It ended up being a double digit deficit that the that the Jets lost by. And the thirty two nineteen is even a little bit deceiving because that was a garbage time touchdown. At the end, they had their way with the Jets running the ball. As a team, 38 carries for 180 yards, two rushing touchdowns. Uh, Jordan Mason ran the ball 28 times, 147 yards, 5.3 yards per attempt. I mean, there's nothing nothing to say there. Juwan Jennings was their leading receiver, 5 for 64. Debo went 5 for 54. 
Kittle went four for 40. Ayuk just two catches, 28 yards. Sauce Gardner really good in coverage. To, to me, the big thing, the defensive line got pushed around. And when they were dropping back to pass, which they only did a 29 passing attempts from Brock Purdy, Jets defensive line wasn't getting any pressure. They they were not getting anywhere close to, to Brock Purdy. He had all day to throw, which a little frustrating. Uh, let's go to Alex. He's calling in from Kansas now. How's it going, Matt O'Leary? This is Alex Robson, formerly from Virginia, now living in Kansas. Big change, I know. But um, just wrapped up Jets Niners, really disappointed. I want to talk about two things here. Number one, someone who I know is not going to be talked about enough, but someone who deserves a lot of blame for what just happened, believe it or not to me, is Joe Douglas and his mismanagement of this roster. Letting Bryce Huff walk. Trading John Franklin Myers for nothing, letting Quentin Jefferson, who was very good for us last year, walk. It, there was zero pressure generated by this Jet defensive line throughout the entire game, both in the run game and in the pass game. It's unacceptable. And you also trade for Hassan Reddick, who everybody knew wanted a new contract, and you don't have that in place. And then you take this stance that I understand you want him in the building, but at some point the rubber has to meet the road and you have to make exceptions. You have to get this done, and if it's not done by tomorrow at some point, again, it's just another Joe Douglas disaster class in terms of managing this roster. Also, i got to critique Robert Sala. First off, his special defense was awful this past week. They couldn't stop a nosebleed. And also, what the hell was that at the end pulling Aaron Rodgers? I get what he was doing. I do. I understand why you do it. You protect the quarterback that's coming off an Achilles injury. I do understand that. But also kind of a B-word move as you're waving the white flag, basically saying we quit, you win, fight another day. I get it's week one, but something about that just doesn't sit well with me. I don't know if it's just mm. me and just how I was raised and how I am, or maybe I'm not alone and feeling like I don't like seeing my team give up completely. Let me know what you think, Matt, and as always, go Jets. Yeah. So th- uh, again, thank you uh, for for the call. I I don't know if I agree with the taking Rogers out. Well, I will say if you're going to take Rogers out, Brees Hall shouldn't have been in the game. Garrett Wilson shouldn't have been in the game. Like I understand they can't take every single player out on on offense, but like maybe you see Olu for the drive. I, I if you're going to do it, don't go. Well, it's not even halfway. It's like a, a eighth of the way there with only taking out uh, Aaron Rodgers at, at that point. Look, your, your blame to Joe Douglas is is rare. Uh, there are a lot of Joe Douglas defenders, and I I don't consider myself a Douglas defender, I guess. I'm not, I'm not advocating for Joe Douglas to get fired. I think he's done a pretty good job with this team, and I think the coach gets significantly more of the blame than Joe Douglas. It feels like Douglas gets complete free pass by a lot of the fan base and Robert Sala gets all the blame. Sala get Sala needs to have blame in this. Uh, I think Joe Douglas's piece of the pie is a little bit bigger than some fans would like to admit. Uh, you, you made a good point with trading John Franklin Myers for nothing really stood out in this game um, because the Jets were picked apart in the run game without their best run defending edge rusher. Their new best run defending edge rusher is Michael Clemens and the 49ers game plan. If you you know go back and, and watch the all 22, it's available now. They ran directly at Michael Clemens essentially the whole game and, and the Jets had no answer for it. No answer for it whatsoever. So JFM1 is big, but letting Bryce Huff walk Listen, I, you guys, if you listen to the show, you know how I felt at the time about Bryce Huff. I didn't like that decision. P- pivoting to Hassan Reddick after you let Bryce Huff leave. Okay, good. Like, I think you needed a pass rusher. You get him in here. You know, let's let's do it. But that's the thing. You haven't done, He's still holding out. So the Jets essentially lost Bryce Huff and John Franklin Myers from this defense a year ago and haven't replaced them yet because Hassan Reddick's not in the building. Now, you could blame Reddick more than Douglas. I like I understand that side of it too. I'm not saying Hassan Reddick is blame-free in any of this, but the reality is is his decision was or the team's decision was not to bring back Bryce Huff 
instead to pivot and trade for Hassan Reddick, who everyone knew wanted a new deal. And the Jets just said, we're going to let, I don't know, between the two of them, how many, 110 pressures and 15 sacks just, just go away. And if you want to still throw Quentin Jefferson in there, that's another four, five, six sacks. And uh, Javon Kinlaw, I will say, I thought he was pretty solid. And I think he ends up being at least a very comparable swap to what um, to what you got out of Quentin Jefferson the last year. But really the big thing that stood out to me from this defense uh, defensive line in particular was they missed a real pass rusher on third down and their run defense did not look nearly as good without John Franklin Myers. It's two things that I was concerned about going into the season. I talked about it a lot in the off season. Granted, it's one game, so we'll see if they're able to get it back on track. But that sample that we saw last night isn't going very far to those who were who were worried about it. If anything, it kind of just adds fuel to the fire there. So I do think Douglas deserves a little bit more blame than what he's getting from some people. Um, but I, I'm not ready to call it a, a, a disaster class just yet. I'm not hitting that full panic button. Um, I, I, I think Alex is a little bit more concerned maybe than I am at this point, which is which is okay. We'll see how they, they end up. Let's go to Max. He's calling from New Jersey. He has a reaction to. And this is uh, Max from Holman, New Jersey, currently college in Glassboro at Rowan University. Here's my thoughts on the Jets Niners game. So I think we played decent. I mean, we didn't play good. We didn't, we didn't play great, but I didn't think we played that bad. I mean, yes, the score wasn't great. Uh, 32 to 19 wasn't a great score. I would like the game to be closer, but it was also against the NFC champion and Super Bowl runner up last year. So here are my positive takeaways and negatives. So my positive takeaway is that our offense is really good. Aaron Rodgers had a, a good touchdown, free play, and there were some good plays. I mean, our offense was okay. I mean, we should have done better on the fourth down. We could have had a better fourth down play goal or third down. Like, I didn't like how, like, how it was, like, running out the middle. It never worked. I don't know. They kept calling that play. I don't know. They should have had a more creative running play, in my opinion, for defense. Okay. I think the defense played bad today. I mean, I understand we play against the Niners. Their offense is, like, one of the best in the NFL. But, seriously, we lost 32 points on the Niners. I mean, I'd be more concerned if we allow that this many points to the Titans. And the Titans were terrible this week against the Bears. They were leading the Bears 17 nothing. Meltdown. And then they choked the game away. So I'd be concerned about the defense if we allow the Titans to get like more than 24 points. What's your thoughts on this? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the defense really needs to bounce back against a team that is not nearly in the same stratosphere as the San Francisco 49ers. 49ers are, for my money, the best team in the NFC. Now that doesn't, like, the Jets have high expectations this year. So they don't just get a free pass and you go, oh, well, it was the 49ers. It's okay. You got blown out. Like I would have liked to see them be much more competitive, but the concern level for me gets cranked up if they have a bad performance against Tennessee. If Will Levis is going out and throwing for 250 yards, they're getting in the end zone. They're running at will on this defense again for a second week in a row and they lose on the road and it's sitting at 0 and 2. Yeah, you can turn that you could turn that flame up uh, a little bit higher than at, at that point. It was some of the play calling was predictable. You mentioned at one point, Max, about um, just a more creative running play. I would add too, like I would have liked to see Braylon Allen a little bit earlier than than when they put him in there. The final drive. That's when we saw Braylon Allen. That's that's too late. That's too late. Jake from Jersey. He has his reaction as well. Let's hear from him. Hey, what's up, Matt? Um, Jake from Jersey calling in immediately after the game here. Um, not panicking, but just a couple of things I didn't like from the game, man, where I think some of the short yardage situations we could have used Braylon Allen um, instead of Brees Hall, if I'm being honest, just like the third and one, fourth and one. <clears throat> also, um, did we bench Sauce at one point? That was a little ridiculous. And then um, on top of that, man, what was our two sacks we got from, I think, Tony Adams and Sauce, if I'm not mistaken? It's just, it's, I don't know, that D-line needs, we, we really need to get pressure. <clears throat> I think, uh, I, I really hope that I wake up to uh, a Reddick extension or something, man. But, uh, see what happens next week. Pretty happy with how, uh, how Rodgers played, though. I mean, I don't think he did anything crazy, but no. I do think he played pretty well. 
Did I just that that's a, somewhat of a functioning offense? Um, but, uh, yeah, man. Go Jets. Yeah, it's concerning, right? Like, not, not getting any pressure. That's their calling card. The Jets were so good at rushing for and getting pressure and just having a rotating cast of guys who it didn't seem to matter who was in there. They were able to get get after the quarterback. And, look, I like Trent Williams is back. Obviously, that was a huge deal. He's, for my money, the best left tackle in football. But after that, like their offensive line really isn't all that good. The interior of that line struggled a lot last year. Their right tackle, McEvitts, I've all I've heard from 49ers fans all week is how much they can't stand that guy. Uh, so I was just I was surprised by the effort. Uh, now, you know, I also mentioned a lot on this show and in other videos that I do on the YouTube channel that I do think missing Hassan Reddick is is an issue for this Jets pass rush. I didn't think it'd be that bad. Uh, it was it was glaring to me. And offensively, I, I was fine with how Rodgers played. He only threw the ball 21 times. His yards per attempt was eight, which that's very rare to see for a Jets quarterback. Completion percentage over 60%. Turnover was a tipped ball. It's going to happen. Um, you know, not every interception is is the same, although it shows up that way on the stat sheet. You know, context matters a little bit. The free play touchdown, when have we ever seen a Jets quarterback do that? Uh, and it was his first back game back in, in a long time. And essentially 20 months, really. I mean, his last full game was in January of 2023. Long time ago, man. So all in all, I thought he was pretty good. I'm not going to, you know, sit here and say, oh my God, Aaron Rodgers winning the MVP this year. He was amazing. He was stellar. No, he also wasn't hard. He wasn't bad in this game either. I thought he was pretty good. I thought there were some, some promising signs there uh, from him, which if you want to take any positives out of that, let it be this. Uh, let's do James calling up. Uh, he wants, he wants uh, Robert Sala fired. All right, let's do it. Hey Matt, uh, big fan of the show. Name's James, uh, from Jersey. Um, you know, I just wanted to give a couple thoughts on the game, uh, Monday night and, you know, glaring, glaring, uh, discrepancy is, uh, to me, why, why does Robert Sala still have a job? Why, why does he still have a job? Last year, there were so many games last year where you know, the Browns game, the Cowboys game, you know, you name it, where the defense, you know, I guess the solid offense just came out completely unprepared. And it happened again tonight. It happened again tonight. We had no answer for Jordan Mason, undrafted rookie. Never heard of this guy in my life. And he's running all over us like it's nothing. And I want to hear the excuse of Reddick being out. The defensive line was a travesty tonight. There was no pressure on the quarterback. We were getting ran all over by a mediocre offensive line. It's unbelievable how did, how this guy stole the job after four straight losing seasons. Or what was it? Three. It three. might have. Was, I think it's three straight losing seasons. My fault. But unbelievable how this guy just got a free pass after last year, after all the terrible games I watched. Not only on offense, but on defense, too. It is unreal. All right, those are my thoughts, Matt. Big fan of the show, like I said. Thank you, man. Uh, have a good one. Thank you for the call. I understand your Robert Sala frustration. It was a bad day. It was a really bad day for, for the head coach. Um, I'm going to try my best to tell you why he's still here. It, it probably won't convince you, and I totally understand that. I, I don't want to be a Robert Sala shill. I think he deserved to get um, brought back for this year um, because we didn't really get a chance to to see him with the the quarterback last year. Uh, I thought we saw enough strides from the the defense going you know year over year, improving there and how they developed players. There's obvious concerns for me with his in game management, and last night or two nights ago now was not. Uh, did not make me feel any better about it. If if the Jets don't win this year, he's out of a job. Uh, I think that the pressure is is very very high on him to to perform. And if they start out cold, that pressure is going to get cranked up even more. 
Um, so I don't want to call for his job yet. He's I'm not saying he's a good coach, but um, we have to see how this plays out with Aaron Rodgers for a little bit longer than just the one game for me. Um, again, if if they lose to Tennessee, gets cranked up a little bit more and you know so on, I don't, I don't want to see that be the case. Um, really, it goes back to Sala and Douglas got a pass for last year, two of them together, uh, because of what happened with Aaron Rodgers' four plays in. So both of them are going to get the opportunity. If Robert Sala doesn't perform, he'll be let go. PG from Long Island is here, and he wants to talk some Joe Douglas. Hello, Matt O'Leary. PG from Long Island here, calling you Monday night after the just debacle we just witnessed. Couple things. One, as I said last week, uh, blowout in the direction doesn't really define the season. Uh, first game, it's 17 games. That's a great team that San Francisco has. Um, going cross country and playing them on Monday night, very tough. But they did have their best offensive player, the best player on the roster actually, uh, missing. They also had a couple of deep, a couple of defensive players that important to them missing. And to get blown out like that, very disappointing, uh, horrible, really. And, you know, a um, couple of things we talked about where, you know, were the Jets going to show up and were they going to get out coached? Well, they didn't show up and they got out coached. Uh, Jets came out, held them down really well the first couple of drives, but then obviously San Francisco made some adjustments and they ended up just, running through them. I don't know what it ended up being, maybe six yards per carry. Where is that just defense? That's just, it's just, it's just horrible. Um, and going back to your uh, statements last week in this podcast where everybody's job is on the line, but I got to tell you something. I think that, you know, Joe Douglas's job is to put a team out there that is competitive and by all accounts, you know, the pundits throughout the league just have one of the top rosters in football. So it's up to Joe, Joe Doug, uh, rather Robert Sala and his, his team to get the best out of those. And they didn't, they did not do that tonight. I can see a scenario if this continues like this where, where Robert, uh, Sala gets fired and Joe Douglas keeps his job. And I don't think that'd be a bad thing. Um, if this continues, Joe Douglas has made mistakes. Should have had a backup quarterback last year. Should have done better with the, well, maybe should have done better with the Bryce Huff situation. But other, other mistakes he's made. Um, but he's made some great trades and he's done some outstanding picking, picks in the uh, draft. So I could see that scenario where he stays and solid goes. But let's see what happens this year. Only one team, one game left. Um, only one game behind. So, as always, go Jets. Yeah, PG, I can't say I agree with that one, my man. Um, and, and, look, I think Joe Douglas has done more good than than bad for, for the Jets. I think he's a pretty good GM. But the biggest thing, watching that game, the defensive line stood out as such a negative. And the, they objectively got worse from a year ago if you include the absence of Hassan Reddick, which you have to because that's that's the whole picture. The picture that we have right now is he traded away John Franklin Myers for 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 zero, uh, and their plan was to have Michael Clemens be his replacement. That looked horrible last night. They let Bryce Huff walk in for agency. Fine. His replacement isn't here. Because they won't talk to him unless he's in the building. He's he's eating popcorn, watching the game like the rest of us. I you know I I don't think Douglas deserves this complete free pass for for this. He his roster is is pretty good, but it, it doesn't just stop there. Like there's some there's legitimate things that he contributed to as a reason for why they weren't good last year because they did not do anything at the backup quarterback spot. Um, he paid, you know, Alan Lazard, you know, a bunch of money, um, the Will McDonald, like whatever, whatever you, you want to point to from, from last year and some issues with that roster, 
this year, yeah, they I like what they did on the offensive line. They have a better contingency plan there. On the uh, uh, on the um, oh my god, at the backup quarterback spot, Tyrod significant upgrade. What do they do on defense? Quentin Jefferson and uh, Quentin Jefferson leaves. Bryce Huff leaves. Al Woods leaves. And I don't know that without Hassan Reddick, obviously, which matters a lot, the defensive line isn't good enough. And that was the, the big thing watching that game was they couldn't stop the run because the line was getting pushed around. And anytime they did drop back to pass, they didn't get any pressure. So that 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 is to do with Joe Douglas, and again, that doesn't give a pass to Robert Sala, who did not go to do a good job in this game either. But I don't know why it's one is you know vilified and it's got to be fired today, and the other one after six years deserves a contract extension. I think they're a little bit closer uh, than we might like to admit. Vic from Florida is calling in next. What do we got? Hey, Matt, Vic from Florida. Hopefully you uh, get this message instead of my first one. Uh, so you could go ahead and delete that one. Want to get more talking points out. I was probably just a little still flustered. But again, like I said, I slept on, this, on the game, right? It's never as good as you think. It's never as bad as you think. But one thing is for sure, Robert Sala is as bad as we think. I mean, Olberg and Sala come from San Fran. It's the same offense. Without Christian McCaffrey, how do they not figure this out? They make no adjustments. I mean, they're literally shoving the ball down our throat, and we can't even call a timeout. I don't think we called timeout in the first half till there was a minute left. Robert, we, they, they do not run over into the second half. I mean, my God, give these guys a chance. You're talking about a top-five defense? Unbelievable. Our defensive line was horrendous. Will McDonald, a first-round pick? That skinny mini Gumby, whatever the heck they want to call him, got bent out of shape. I mean, it, it was it was bad. It was it was bad, you know. Um, on a positive, Aaron looked good when he was calling his own play. If you noticed, every time he went to the line of scrimmage and did his old Aaron Rodgers thing, you know, where he changes up the play at the line, we were successful. When he did it, we ran the ball and didn't get nothing. I mean, Lazard has a big catch. Brees has a huge fumble. That's going to happen. we got to make an adjustment on defense, Matt. This is tough. This is tough to watch. Like I was saying in my first voicemail, the Niners are obviously a uh, Super Bowl runner-up. Probably should have won the Super Bowl last year. Okay? They're a great football team. We could have hang with them. Are you kidding me? And then you're talking about the Jets being a playoff team? Playoff? <laughs> we can't even win a game. I'm, I'm I'm glad we got uh, you know Tennessee coming up, but they're coming off a pretty upset uh, pretty upsetting loss. They might punch us in the mouth. I don't know, but all I know is that I cannot watch Robert Sala coach this team much longer. He's got to make an adjustment. We got we got we got some work to do this week. Anyways, Matt, I appreciate it. Long time listener, first time caller. You'll Thank be you, hearing from me a lot this season. God bless, man. Appreciate all you do. See ya. Thank you, Victor. <laughs> Didn't expect that Jets chant at the end. Thank you, Vic. Look forward to hearing from you again, my guy. Uh, all right. So a few things, uh, mostly about looking forward is where I wanted to go with this this voicemail, is there's a lot of responsibility on this coaching staff heading into this second game. You know, they want to you know use the excuse of it's the first game and rust and we can work out on the defense and this is, you know, a championship team that, you know, we showed us how to play. Okay. Well, Tennessee stinks. Sorry. They're, they're not a very good football team. A new coach, young quarterback who is very mistake prone. Wide receivers, underwhelming. Show, show me. All right, let's do it then in week two. Because if he doesn't, then Vic, that, that's when I'm turning up the heat a little bit higher. This one, I'm frustrated with the loss and I'm frustrated with the effort. And there were some concerning things. I'm not going off the deep end yet, but they're, if they're staring 0-2 in the face, that's a different story. Then I'll be right there with you yelling and screaming uh, in this episode next week. Peter from the Hudson Valley calls in. No rookie usage? Let's talk about it. Hey, man. Yeah, it's Peter from up in the beautiful Hudson Valley calling in the day after 
the Jets lost to San Francisco on Monday Night Football. Yes, I agree with you. Frustrating and disappointing game, but you're playing a team that went to the Super Bowl last year and well, has a really good coach in Kyle Shanahan and how to get the most out of his players. Speaking of players like that, um, Christian McCaffrey sitting in the game, and they have behind him an undrafted rookie free agent at running back who dashes the Jets' defense time and time again. At least the defense just didn't give up touchdown after touchdown after touchdown, but, you know, didn't break and gave up six field goals. That wasn't so great. I mean, the the, um, the drive from Aaron Rodgers, that third drive for the Jets, was great to see. Uh, something where we actually have a functional quarterback, and that's what it looks like when an offense clicks and moves down the field and gets a score. So we obviously want more of that going forward. I think they need to fix that run defense as quickly as possible to get it uh, back in shape. I don't know what they're going to do, but hopefully they can take care of it. Uh, but here's my question. In watching the game, you can obviously see that San Francisco had, you know, Mason and even Dominic Cooney, who was a rookie, you know, on the offense. There's other offensive play, you know, rookies, you know, contributing throughout the game. We see that from other teams. I just don't understand the Jets' reluctance early in the season to use their rookies. Braylon Allen got touches only late in the game. We didn't see Isaiah Davis on the field except on special teams. Malachi Corley was out there for a handful of snaps, if I remember correctly. Like, these are guys that need to make contributions to allow this team to win games. You only have 17 chances to win games. Get them on the field. Get them contributing. I just don't understand the Jets' reluctance to do that, especially that third and one and then what wound up being a fourth and one situation. Braylon Allen, you know, behind Rucker or Fersker or somebody yep. could have probably gotten that first down. So hopefully that's something the Jets start correcting real soon, fix the run defense, and I think we'll be pretty solid against Tennessee on Sunday. But frustrating, to say the least. But again, we only lost to the defending NFC champions, not some scrubs. Let's go Jets. Yeah. This week. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Peter. It's They didn't lose to scrubs, which is, is a fair way to look at it, um, which is why I'm not more animated today and, and more upset. Um, I'm not not pleased with the effort. The Malachi Corley played one snap. Uh, Braylon Allen didn't see the field until literally the final drive of the game. Brees Hall was struggling to get going in this game, and he didn't play particularly well. He had a drop. He had the fumble. It, it wasn't a great Brees Hall game, and you know he even admitted it himself. He said it to Aaron Rodgers. He apologized to Aaron Rodgers. I don't think he needs to do that because. You know, there were a hell of a lot of games last year where Brees Hall was carrying this team offensively, but uh, he's been better. But I, if you're going to have Braylon Allen as your RB2, if you draft this 240-pound running back that you love so much, use him on third and one or fourth and one or down on the goal line uh, on the two-point conversion, he wasn't on the field. <laughs> make it make sense. It doesn't. That's the problem. That That is the issue. The, the personnel usage in this game was... A head scratcher to say the least. Neil, you're going to close us out from Jersey City. What do you got, my friend? Hey, what's up, Matt? This is Neil from Jersey City. Hope all is well. Um, you know, just coming off of the San Francisco loss, that's disappointing, of course. Um, but I will say I do think that there are some positives to take from it, for sure. I mean, just the eye test alone, you can see how much more competent Rodgers was last night than anything the Jets have had in the last two decades essentially, so uh, certainly that's a positive. And also that he was, was uh, he stayed upright, and that O-line seemed to hold up, at least in pass protection. I think the run blocking could have been better. Um, but, yeah, I think that um, in terms of the negatives, the defensive line, of course, I thought, you know, played really poorly. I think everyone can, uh, you know, see that. The run defense, I mean, just getting gashed, that's certainly a concern. I'm curious how – Truly concerned we should all be, though, by it, considering it is San Francisco. Um, and then, uh, you know, just one other comment for you. I really got to say, I'm just 
disappointed seeing Alan Lazard out there, you know, time and time again. I know he made the touchdown grab and he made a nice catch along the sidelines, but just to start off that game with that third and three drop, I mean, how many times are they going to put this guy out there only to drop the ball in a, in a crucial moment of the game? You know, and I know it's a, to me, I know it's the first drive of the game, but I think that that's the tone setter. And I just really can't wait till Mike Williams is fully healthy and, like, they have no limitations on the snap count because I, I really hope that he takes all the snaps away from Lazard. I'm, I'm tired of seeing him. Thanks so much, and uh, let's hope for better success in week two. Yeah, I am right there with you. Hopefully a better, more successful game in, in week two. Uh, I, I also would ra- rather see Mike Williams. It's going to be a few weeks, though. It's it's going to take a little bit. He played, what did I say before? Was it eight snaps for, for Mike Williams? Let me scroll up. Uh, nine. Nine snaps, 18%. Uh, for Alan Lazard, he played 100%, all 51. Uh, I'm glad that he came on strong after the drop, but I was uh, I yelled some things at my TV uh, when he dropped that ball because this is that's what he did last year. Very up and down. Streaky player, man. Really, really frustrating one. But hopefully that frustration turns to a better reaction next week. How about that? A little bit more on the positive side to close things out. Jets against the Tennessee Titans. Uh, Wanted to mention as well, I am doing a watch party uh, in New Jersey for this game at uh, a beautiful, beautiful venue. Um, really excited and looking forward to to this event. I'll give you some info on it and pull it up on the screen uh, right now. If you're watching, uh, I appreciate you. If you're listening, I'll read it out to you. So it's at uh, the Beach Gallery in Keensburg, New Jersey. Doors are at two. Uh, excuse me, 12 p.m. for the one o'clock kickoff. Free entry, live game audio, DJ during breaks, food and drink specials. You could RSVP by going to tbgnj.com. Your RSVP guarantees you a spot inside. If you don't RSVP, you'll have to you know wait on the line um, and, and get in that way. But you kind of can you can skip the line with an RSVP. Um, so I'm excited to make my way over to Jersey for a week two. But that'll do it for me and this one, guys. Appreciate you subscribe if you're new. Catch you next time.